In this video we're going to talk about uh, a few different ways of streaming audio with uh, Yamaha equipment. So perhaps you want to get into the high res audio and you like Yamaha gear. So I'll talk about uh, WXC50 on the top, the AS801 in the middle and the RN602 on the bottom. So we can discuss some of the differences and similarities and whatnot. So right off the top I'll say you can buy all this equipment used for a good deal. I didn't buy any of this new. There's no need to buy this stuff new. It's going to last a long time. You might get a few more scratches or fingerprints on used equipment, but it's rugged enough that it's going to work. So WXC50 is a streamer. It was, I guess it was crafted by uh, Yamaha to fit some other older or less capable amps. So the, the AS801 is not a uh, streamer. When it came out initially, you could buy some Bluetooth uh, adapter for it, which would could get uh, USB power off the back of the amp, and then go in 48 kilohertz into the coax. That was the best that they had back then in 2015. Then the streamers came along, so the uh, RN602, it uh, has a radio built into it, but being a streamer, you don't need a radio. You would need a radio in that thing. But anyway, that's the way Yamaha rolls. They mix the stuff up, so you need to buy everything. So it uh, will play USB off of a stick. So it can play DSD as the uh, WXC50 can as well. It has a USB stick on the back. So you've got that for you. The WXC50 has no display, no user interface. It just comes with this uh, little remote. And uh, you can't do much with it unless you have a computer running the MusicCast app. The 801 has a nice uh, metal clad remote with a few extra buttons if you buy some other Yamaha equipment it can control both. And uh, then you can also the RN602 has a very similar remote, but it's plastic entirely. And again, it has the ability to pr run other equipment, which is good and bad. So our Yamaha only has like two different signal types for their equipment as far as uh, r remotes. So if I turn something off, I'm not going to do it because it's going to screw everything up. It, turning the power button on and off is going to turn all three of these things off. I've got the WXC50 on a different channel than the other guys, but it, it impacts all of them. But at least the volume doesn't change on all of them. The, uh, these two are both on Yamaha ID1. You can't change that, so it's not useful having these two on top of each other and using your remote because they're going to behave the same. What else is there? Yeah, the RN602 is an 80-watt uh, amp. You can get the 803, which is 100 watts. It has half of the um, distortion of the RN602. And it also has a microphone for calibrating your mics and your sub, which is kind of handy. And then the AS801 here, it's 100 watts and again has half the distortion of the uh, RN602. So that's sort of what you're looking at getting for specs. The uh, 602 on the bottom is very programmable. You have to use a remote to get into the, a lot of the settings. You can update the firmware on it. And uh, it works pretty good, but you need the remote. The uh, 801 has no configuration through the remote. It's all switches on the front. And you can go on the back to turn off the sleep function if you don't want to go to sleep because there's no way to get into it. If you go in the service manual for the 602, you can find out there's a button codes you can press to get into the special programming and then on top of that there's another set of uh, buttons you can press to get into like the uh, service directory with the uh, WXC50 if you go to its web page and then put in slash service you can go into its service directory that way because there's no interface the uh, build quality on the uh, 801 is a bit nicer for these two knobs. These are actually metal knobs through and through. Whereas uh, on the 602, the knobs are plastic with like a metal cap on them. 
And uh, with this WXC50, you can turn it as a full preamp and turn off the volume knob, which is I've done. So I guess that's enough of a preamble for now. We'll look at the back of the amps later on, if I uh, remember. So to get back to playing high-res audio, now that we've had a bit of an introduction to this stuff. So we, uh, we'll start with streaming. So right now I have the speakers hooked up to the 801. It's my new amp that's going to be sitting here. The 602 is going elsewhere in the house. So I'm going to have it tethered to the WXC50 for the time being. So to stream to it, there's a couple ways you can do that. If you're on the same network, you can just click on a file, right click, go cast to device, and you can cast to it this way. And it works, but I'm not going to, I just because uh, I'm using FUBAR right now. That's sort of part of the deal of what I'm trying to show you here. So if you want to uh, cast with FUBAR, you'll have to go in and install some different items. You want the UPnP, that's the main one that you need to install. If you got an 801 and you want to cast, you need the ASIO support, a DSD processor, a Super Audio decoder, and then there's like an extra little bit to the Super Audio decoder. You can download the instructions from Yamaha on how to do that. If you're doing the 801, you'll see the ASIO in here. You'll have the Yamaha Steinberg here as well. And then the, again, you follow the instructions, but for casting, use UPnP. There's really not much uh, of anything to set. You just set the bit rate here for the streaming. I just left it at 44100. I think you can turn it up, but I haven't fooled around with that. Then you will uh, go to library and you will start the UPN media server. Then you'll go to UPNP controller. You will select a device. So we're going to select the uh, WXC50, which used to live in the garage. You will hit play. And then you will hit playback screen stream capture. And this song has a bit of an intro, so I have to wait a second to see if it's going to play. Oh, it's very clunky. So it's in the playback queue. Yeah, so it's going. So that's uh, about it for streaming that way. You should get to learn FUBAR or J River or some of the other programs. They're not as easy, but you get better audio, audio quality once you get them set up correctly. Another option would be to use uh, the MusicCast app. So you can see that uh, it's talking to the WXC50. It knows the uh, sample rate. And I'm going to change it because I don't want to be on server right now. I want to show a couple other things. If you want to know what the uh, displayed data is, you go into here. And audio information, you have to turn that on. It's not on initially for whatever reason. So I'm going to try a couple different things. So um, from this tablet, we're going to go to external source. I've got some the same music on here. So you can hear it playing. So I'm just going to flip through and just show you the quality that it can do. That's really all the point is. And then you're going to see that it can't play DSD files. It, doesn't, it can't make any sense of them. So 
So no luck there. So that was off of this tablet. You can also go off of the server doing this. Um, yeah, it, this works. Sometimes you have to slide back and forth like between libraries and whatnot. But uh, I don't have anything ready to go on the server. But uh, I do have a USB stick loaded in the uh, back of the WXC50. And I do want to show that. So again, we can play the flak. Oh, we skipped the DSD. What the heck? Okay, so I guess the other DSD song there was uh, likely uh, the surround sound version. It won't play. So you can see I'm set to CD on here, and that's because the WXC50 can't stream out of the uh, coax for DSD. There's nothing. I have it plugged into coax, but you're not going to get a, a sound. You can use the uh, direct if you want. And then the functionality on the RN602 is about the same. Just grab the stick out of it. So you can see on the back, I've got the uh, coax there, and then I've got just the regular analog, and then the USB stick. And then you need to format your stick as FAT32, which limits you to four gig files. Now, if you want to play with the RN602, it's quite a bit easier, right? Because you've got a remote and a display. So it, it knows what I did last. I just want to return. So yeah, I'll go into high res samples into there and then if you go to option and then down you can go to signal info and flak and then you can start shuffling through so it's good to do like a blind test like you can just turn your back from the machine and shuffle through them and try to guess what uh, signal quality you've got going on and just figure out if you can uh, determine the difference. And if you see three dashes, that means it doesn't know how to play that file and it's just going to skip over it, basically. So, I guess we've covered uh, quite a bit about the face of the equipment, how you can play it with uh, FUBAR for DSD, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I have a 50 foot active USB cable and it works. The printer cable USB 2, it works. And uh, the only time I've gotten a glitch is like if you receive an email, it'll flip back to like your PCM signal and then it flips back to DSD. And so it doesn't like that. So you, if you get another audio signal come in, You'll get a glitch on the AS801. Otherwise, the long cable it's not a, doesn't seem to be an issue. Let's go back to how this all started, right? So with the uh, the TV, so the optical is not so good. You should try to avoid using that. HDMI is better, but to get it down here, you need to have some kind of a DAC or whatnot. Otherwise, you're going to be limited to 48 kilohertz. Just gonna move my uh, tablet. The tablet is quite useful, not mandatory. Unplug this cable here. I got a big light here because like it's really hard to film black equipment, as I found out. <laughs> so the uh, side profile of these two units is identical. It's got the same kind of a bezel, classic Yamaha. 
the RN803 is bigger and uh, this guy is about five more pounds than that guy I think and then the 803 is a bit more even th than that perhaps I'll try not to get in my shadow you can see neither of these amps have a um, just a right left audio out they both have a uh, low pass 100 hertz cut off for a subwoofer that works good. They do have out for the um, tape decks if you're ever using such a thing. What else do we have here? This is of note. The RN602 has two optical ports and two coax ports so you can get a lot more stuff connected to it. Whereas with the uh, 801 you're kind of limited a lot with uh, digital inputs. You've only got one of each. You got your USB, you got your coax, and you got your optical. And then there's a USB power over here. That's all it does. It's not an input. I've got uh, bi-amped on here. So I've got a pair of uh, Paradigm or Studio Reference 40 version 4 speakers. I just have the covers off. I was having a a minor heart attack. I thought I'd blown one of my drivers there. It wasn't sounding right, but it was actually the quality of the DSD. You could tell where the microphone was. The sound was louder from one side than the other on a Santana song. So you can actually like picture where the microphone is compared to where the um, the drums were. And I was really puzzled by it. So I took my speakers apart. Then I moved the uh, speaker wires back and forth and was able to deduce that the speakers were fine and it was actually the recording that I could hear it was an issue. Um, you got a little antenna for your Bluetooth and your 2.4 gigahertz. Neither of these devices are on the 5 gigahertz range so if you have a uh, Wi-Fi system that doesn't have 2.4 you're gonna have to get a new router. You need to have like a dual signal or triple 2.4, 5, and 6, depending on what you're on, because you want your devices all to be on the same network so they can see each other and play music. The uh, power cable is removable on the 801. It's not on the RN602. I do believe it's removable on the 803. The 801 and the 803 are AVR variants of some sort, so they show some similarities, and then again, I don't know why Yamaha does what it does. So there's no, nothing connected to the binding posts. But the binding posts are pretty good. Like I said, this has radio on it, which is totally unnecessary. I stream all my radio. You don't need to be limited to what you can pick up in the airwaves. It's pretty cool. I've done a video on that already. I've done a video on setting the remotes as well you can look at. There's the uh, standby on-off switch here, so you can prevent it from going to sleep. And then there's the uh, infamous ohm switch here. So you just leave that on 8 ohms apparently, otherwise the internet will freak out. There's an ethernet cable on here. There's an ethernet cable on a WXC50 as well. I can't access it right now because the cables are too short to get it out. There's my... Uh, this is a fairly expensive TV actually and it had like a remote HDMI optical USB contraption here so you don't have a bunch of wires running to the TV. I think uh, Samsung has discontinued that practice on their 8000 series TVs. They've kind of cheaped them out. Okay, so uh, there we are. I guess we're gonna shut it down. If anyone has any questions feel free to send me an email or a message in uh, YouTube. And if anyone knows how to do the DSD over DLNA with the WXC50 or the RN602, please let me know because I have not figured out how to do it. So thank you for watching.